Watch this video to see how you can get your sprites to follow your mouse like this. Welcome, my name is Mr. Kier from School Tech HQ, and today we're going to have another look at Scratch. In particular, how to make a character or sprite follow your mouse around the screen. If you're new to using Scratch or you haven't used it before, here is a picture of the different areas of the interface that we're going to be using today in Scratch. And I'll refer to these throughout the video. So, let's begin. So this code along, we're going to create a face where the eyes will follow our mouse across the screen. The first step to achieving this is to change the backdrop. But before we can do that, we need to delete our cat sprite. We just click on the cat. We can see our sprite option down here. And we click the button. Now that we have a blank stage, we can now customize the backdrop or background of the stage. To do this, we need to select the image with a plus symbol in the bottom right corner, and then go up to paint and select that. You'll notice that we now have a canvas with different design tools to the left of it. For our face, we need to make some eyes. So to do this, we select the circle icon, and then all we do is click and drag we'll go down the way to make it kind of a long eye and let go. And you see what happens when we let go, it shows up on the stage as well. So we can see the canvas is almost like a preview and the stage is what we'll actually see. And we can move around if we click and drag it. What we want to do is go to fill and we want to select this square, white square that has a red line through it, which means it has no fill and we'll leave it there. So that's just got one eye. We now need to make the second eye. Now to do that, we can go back to our, our arrow pointer icon, select that. We then click on our circle. We can now see we have the option to copy and select that one. And then we're just going to paste. You could use Control C, Control V. It also works. And then we're going to click and drag this eye over to the other side. Now these are quite far apart. You can see in the preview in the stage. So we're going to move them a bit closer together adjust it how we like. I might make them a little bit bigger actually. There we go. So now that we have the eyes, we now need to create our nose. Now to do that, we're going to go select our circle tool again. And this time we're going to click and drag a smaller circle horizontally. Now it's filled it in blanks. So what we need to do is we need to click on fill and we're going to make it a nice red nose. And there we go, we've got our nose. And then finally, the last thing we need is we need a smiley face because it is a face after all. So again, we do another circle tool, still staying on that. And we're going to click and drag across our horizontal. This time we're going to fill it just black. So it goes down to brightness and change it to all the way to the dark. And for this one to make it actually look like a smile, we need to select this arrow here. Now this arrow that is pointing or selecting a circle. So we click that and then we select our mouth. You see that we've got now got four points that we can click and drag. So if we click the corner, we can drag it up. And we do the same to the other side. Click it and drag it up. And there we go, we now have a smiley face. You can pause here and adjust the face however you like. Make the eyes wider or thinner, but just make sure that you have at least two big eyes for this project. You'll find out why later on. Okay, so now that we've got our face, we can then go to our code. And we need a sprite now. We've got our face here, but we need some eyes. Now to make the eye, we're gonna to go to our choose sprite icon, and we're gonna go and search. So that little magnifying glass to search for our sprite. And for this, we're gonna use a ball. So we can select the ball. And you see we have a ball here, it just appeared on our stage. To change the color of our ball, we're gonna to go to costumes next to code the top left and I'm going to choose a green one. After that we need to actually make it look like an eye not just a ball so we go to circle tool again and we're going to create a nice circle in the middle of the eye or sorry the middle of the circle to make our eye. And there we go we can make change the shape of that if you want however big you want it however small you want it. Once you're happy with it then click on code. 
So now that we've got our I, we'll put it inside this one and we're going to create the code for it to follow our mouse. So from our block palette, we're going to select events and then we're going to select this first one when, when green flag clicked, drag it over here and drop it down. And that's where we're going to make our code in this area. We then need to go to control and we're going to go and add in a forever loop. So we're going to click and drag this over and you'll see that a shadow appears. That means it's ready to click into there and it will join when we let go. So we've got our when green flag clicked, something is going to happen forever. Now we then need to go up to our motion. This is going to help it make it move. We're then going to select our move 10 steps and add it in to our forever loop. We change that 10 steps to two steps. The reason why is we don't want it to move too fast around. After that, we're going to look at our motion still and go all the way down until we find the point towards mouse pointer. And what we're going to do is click and drag that and add it on top of our move two steps. Drop that in. And so now our command looks like this. We've got our when green flag click. We've got a forever loop. So it's going to always go on until we turn it off. It's going to point towards the mouse pointer and move it two steps at a time. So if I press the green flag to test it out, you see that it's now slowly following along wherever my mouse goes. So there we have it, the first step of making the sprite move around and follow the mouse pointer. But we don't want it to go anywhere because it's meant to be an eye and eyes don't go outside of the, the eye sockets. So we need to try and keep it in this section here. And I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so we've got our basic command here. We've got our when green flag clicked. Forever, it's going to follow this command. It's going to go wherever our mouse pointer is and it's going to move it two steps at a time. Test that out again. There we go. It's moving around, but it's going outside of the eye and we need it to stay inside the eye. For us to be able to do that, we need to add an if then statement. So what we need to do is go back to control in our block palette and then we need to select the if. And then there's this kind of um, hexagon shape, then statement. And we're going to add that underneath our move. So still inside the forever loop, but it's going to be an if then statement. So what we're saying is point towards wherever our mouse is, move two steps. If something happens, then do something else. Now for us to create a barrier here, so black line, is we're going to go to sensing and we're going to select touching color. It's like a purpley color there for me at the moment. And we're going to add that in here. Now you'll notice that it is the same shape, so it will fit perfectly inside this if then gap. We're going to change the color to black. So we click on the color icon and then just scroll it all the way down the brightness till it is as dark as it can be. There you go, we've now got black. Now what we're saying is if this eye touches anything that's black, then something's going to happen. Now to stop it from leaving, if it's moving forward two steps, we then need to make it go backwards two steps so it cancels itself out. So instead of it moving forward two steps, it will move zero steps. So we go to motion and we select the move 10 steps, add it inside our move 10 steps and we're going to change it to negative two steps. Now we'll test that out. So if we go to our green flag and you'll see what's happening is now is that my ball or my eyeball stays with inside the lines. Whenever it touches the black line, it stops moving. And this is why I said, make sure you have nice big eyes so that we've got lots of space for your ball to move around or your eye to move around. Now we've only got one eye though, so we need to make another copy of this. So let's stop that. And we're gonna do the same again, but we could right click on top of your ball sprite and select duplicate. And then you go, we've now got two. We add that inside our circle, our other eye. And when we press green flag, let's make it full screen and test it out. If we press the green flag to go, you'll see that the eyes now follow wherever my mouse goes, but they stay within. And it's almost like this little face is following wherever our cursor is going. Now you can change this up, make it better or different. You can make the eyes smaller. Um, you can make this better by making the balls smaller. You can make the eye perimeter bigger. It's up to you what you do with it, but yeah. So there you go. You've got now created something that will follow your mouse 
And you've also included an if then statement, which means it will do a different action when a certain condition is made. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed playing and adapting the little animation we just made. Remember to pause the video at any time and rewind it if you missed anything. If you enjoyed this code along, please share it with others so they can learn it as well. Comment below, did you enjoy this video? And what will you create next with this simple command? Again, thank you for watching and enjoy learning from SchoolTech HQ. Bye.